comedian and writer David Badil and Britain's first Muslim cabinet minister, Baroness Saida Varsi, have teamed up for a brand new podcast which promises to be frank and fearless and with no political controversy off the table. And they're here now. This is a great idea. You're basically bringing a prominent Muslim uh, and a prominent Jew together to talk about the issues which people are kind of so nervous about and about talking about. I'll give you an example, Baroness. We've had three conservative MPs or, or ministers on the show this week and we couldn't get them to say the word Islamophobia. They just wouldn't say it. Language has become so toxic almost in terms of people's fear of its impact. You're going to be speaking frankly together, aren't you? You're not going to be shying away from words. We're not. And um, I, I would say it's been an interesting week, actually, because mm. uh, we've invented a new form of racism this week my colleagues have called wrongism. Um, <laughs> but uh, but it, is, it, it is important to call out what we see, and language is important, and have the conversations that actually most people are having behind closed doors. But often people will say, well, don't go there, don't have that conversation, you can't say that. And I think when we came together, we felt that... We wanted to go there. We wanted mm. to have the conversations that often we are having in, you know, closed rooms. Such a good idea. But I, we're out in the open. I think the you. thing is, I think what both of us noticed, the, the idea was brought to us actually by Jemima Khan, uh, but oh, I really? think what we all noticed was the news agenda at the moment is really dominated by issues that affect Jewish and Muslim communities. Yes, then what you get a lot of the time is people who aren't Jewish and Muslim talking about that. There will be other political podcasts, to mention no names, because I don't want to plug them, <laughs> that will be talking at this very moment about Islamophobia and anti-Semitism, but neither of the people involved will be Jewish or Muslim. And it seems to right. me like, why not have at least one yes. where the people who are impacted by this stuff get to a chance to talk, and to each other as well, not just to their own communities? I suppose uh, when discussions are had, very often people don't book those two sides, if you like, because they're scared of offence, they're scared of things being too challenging, uh, and, in a way, by confronting it, you are trying to deal with it head-on. Have you offended each other yet? I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> it's part of uh, it's part of what we ha it's part of what we have to do. I mean, I I think that the these uh, conversations are not challenging if you do them in a way which is compassionate and understanding and kind. Mm. And I think that there are lots of times where we've already disagreed and we will disagree and I'm sure sparks will fly. But I hope that at the end of that, there is a, there is a, a sense that uh, we're still, we can still be friends. Mm. There's something and... that, sorry to interrupt, but there's something you oh, said which is about... Yeah, no, we're going to kick off now. Uh, <laughs> that, that you said about two sides. And the thing is that it's not exactly sides. No, so in, in this podcast, I don't think it is exactly hashtag team Muslim versus hashtag team Jew. It might be from time to time that, but really... Really, what we're talking about is sharing mm. the experience. Facing the common enemy, yeah, which, well, is, which is racism. Well, yeah, which is racism, but yeah. also both sharing. Like, we are both from communities that at times can feel very othered within mainstream mm. British culture that, in yeah. different yeah. ways, but sometimes in ways that reflect each other. Yes. You know, and like what's happening this week with Islamophobia, I think, you know, I can relate to that. Why is there such a strong reflex in this country, whether it's on the, on the political level or actually on, on programmes like this, to sort of deny that the, that the problems exist, to, to not want to use the word Islamophobia, to not want to talk about anti-Semitism as, as racism? I mean, your, your book, uh, Jews Don't Count, basically asks the question, it's a brilliant question, Excuse me, a sentence which is anti-Semitic, if you substituted the word, say, Jew for Pakistani or black, you'd say it was a racist sentence. But because it's about a Jew, it's not racist. Yeah. Why do we put it in a special box? Well, I think it's a complicated conversation. And also, there's a lot of uh, sort of assumptions that people do or don't know about. I mean, I've been listening to Saida talk about the experience of being a Muslim at the moment, and there's lots of things I'm learning. When I wrote Jews Don't Count, I was trying to express something, for example, that anti-Semitism is racism and not religious intolerance, which no. a lot of people think it is, mm. because I'm an atheist and that would make no difference to the Nazis or whoever might hate Jews. But that's just something which may be news to people who are not Jewish. So and what, have you, what have you learned to, um, about... Islam or about being a Muslim? Well, I feel that Saida should, should speak, really, cos, like, you know, that... What, what, have you, what have you taught him? I, I think what I've realised is we've got so much in common, and we've always known that, you know, from the diets that the communities follow to so many prayers to the stories in our religious texts. Mm. But I think what's more important in these conversations that we're having is about the lived experience. What was it like growing up as a young Jewish boy? What was it like growing up as a, as a young Muslim girl? What are the challenges that we face? And actually, I think we're also beginning to see the overlap and the patterns in anti 
anti-Jewish racism and anti-Muslim racism, mm. the way in which governments work, the way in which the public sphere talks about us. And almost every single day, you can turn on the television and there will be a story which is either talking about Jews, about Muslims, or the relationship between the two. And we just felt it was time for us to talk about ourselves in our way and tackle some of these really tough issues head on. The number of people who've said to me over the last few months, oh, I feel there's a silencing. We can't go, we can't talk about that. We can't really discuss these mm. issues. We can't use Completely that language. Agree with you. We can't totally go there. Agree. And I we just thought, right, it's time for a Muslim it's a great idea. and a Jew it's to a go great there. Idea. How did you two meet? Because from the outside looking in, your circles wouldn't necessarily cross. Comedy yeah. writer, well, we did a... politician. Sometimes the comedy writers are not well, attacking, what but happened? Well, what satirizing well, we became, the politicians. We became friends, I think, on a show that we did for Stand Up to Cancer, which was where comedians were mentoring people who were not comedians to do some stand up. And I was doing the Reverend Richard Coles, who was really good, but I did in instantly think, oh, Saida's going to win this. And she had Nick <laughs> oh. out because she's really funny yeah. and really good at speaking. But we had, in fact, met. Before that, we had. which was quite an awkward moment, where I did a film <laughs> called The Infidel back in 2010 about a Muslim who suddenly discovers that he was biologically Jewish. The producer, Arvid Davis, said, let's go and meet Baroness Saida Varsi. She'll be able to help. Yeah. So we went to the House of Lords, and all she talked about was the rival film Four Lions. <laughs> <laughs> and how much she liked that. <laughs> Love it. Well, look, how can we get the podcast? Uh, it's available now on all yes, platforms. Spotify, right? all the other kind of podcasts, wherever you get your podcasts, but it's called A Muslim and a Jew, yep. go there. I think, Download it. I think it's one of the best ideas I've heard this year. I think it's fantastic. Thanks. Good luck with it. Cheers. Thank, Thank you. you very much.